Hello, welcome viewers. Welcome to the program Meet Professionals with me, IBKB. Meet Professionals is a program that aims at bringing entrepreneurs, policymakers, experts, academics to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with them on matters of um, business, corporate settings and everything around business and the world over. With me in the studios, I have a very esteemed guest, someone who is an entrepreneur, a fashion designer, author and many more. She's no less a person but Dr. Khadija to Grace Ahini. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So now with me viewers, um, Dr. Khadija to Grace Ahini is um, an entrepreneur from the US, a Sierra Leonean, and would like to have a short conversation with her in a very small time. So Dr. Khadija to Grace, tell me about um, yourself. Of course, my name, thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's a pleasure being here and congratulations for starting this. My name is Dr. Khadijatu Grace Ahini. Of course, I'm originally from Sierra Leone, but then I, I've lived half of my life in, in the US. Um, as you've introduced me, I'm a fashion designer, author, speaker, a transformational coach, and so forth and so on. Um, I, find, I find solace in bringing joy to people's lives, um, whether I do it through fashion or coaching or speaking or anything like that. Good, I think that's impressive. Going through your profile, it looks so much impressive. Now, let's us um, just um, jump start into your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Um, what is it about DJ's Touch Designs? So these these just touch designs came from a place of dissatisfaction. As a young woman living in the United States, I go to the stores. Um, I really can't find me. I can't find anything that represents me, my tradition, my culture. And I said to myself, forget it. If not me, then who? And so I started. It was a tough one. So I started self-teaching myself how to make shoes, like what I'm wearing, okay. um, sneakers, uh, flats, and then now it has turned to something else where everything we touch from couches to mugs to backpacks, everything we turn into African fabric. So now um, you said you ventured to entrepreneurship due to the fact that um, you were unable to find yourself in the US. Mm -hmm. So the passion, where does it come from? Is it from um, the dissatisfaction that you had or let us say you had it inside you but you were not able to bring it out? I was thirst for some something. Um, Sierra Leone is a beautiful country that nobody really knows m much about. Okay. And um, I strongly believe in being a woman that I've been through so much, personally, um, mentally, physically, and emotionally, it also is related to me making sure that the voice of the voiceless is heard. And so I had to find something that spoke for itself. Okay. So Deja's Touch Design is a combination of celebrating flying the flag of Sierra Leone, okay. letting the world know that there's a country in the western coast of Africa that uh, is called Sierra Leone and we are also um, a gem. Um, there are talents, untapped talents in Sierra Leone so I had to figure out a way how to present that in a nutshell with every other thing that comes with it because most of the time we as Sierra Leoneans we struggle in terms of um, presenting or giving something but in a perfect way and so Deja's Touch Design is a way to let everybody know that come to Sierra Leone come visit us we are welcoming people come see what the stuff that we are made of and so Deja's Touch Design by the grace of God we've gone global and um, TV stations all over come to interview me how wow. do you come about making shoes with African fabric authentic African fabric what's the vision what's the story behind it and so I tell them so yeah I, 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 I am proud of me okay um, I'd like us to double click on the aspect of um, you being interviewed by top corporations in the US and which is a very good thing for Sierra Leone um, let us go through um, some of the challenges you face as an entrepreneur in the US Oh boy, I'll tell you, when I first started, I started with nothing to my name. Um, at that time, I was just a new mom, and um, there was no work. And so what I did, what I did was 
I looked into my savings account and I only had hundred dollars to my name I said forget it and so I went to one of our popular shops over there the shopping center Walmart and got these white sneakers and came and sat down I said a little prayer I said God I don't know what I'm doing but then I need your help I mean ideas came flooding like a, str a string of line and so I started doing stuff at first it was not very refined and I showed it to people and they're like wow this is really nice this is something that if you perfect it you can sell and so I kept at it I had sleepless nights it wasn't easy because starting a brand that nobody's really sure of yeah. that they haven't even seen of course everybody's wrapping shoes and doing it for themselves yeah. but then to take it to a point where I am now where it's full production um, with our logos and everything on it it's 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 quite um, it's it's been quite a journey but I'm thankful I always say to people you write a vision make it plain and you work at it sure um, so um, let's go through um, your supply chain management system right mm -hmm. do you actually get the fabric from Sierra Leone I do get my fabrics from Sierra Leone if I'm not able and I always will specifically come to choose fabrics for myself because for me the fabric speaks a lot um, of course you know with Africa everything there's a story behind it and so even with the prints there's a story so what I did first was to make sure that I sat down understood the designs the patterns from every West African country in the West African region um, and I found out that there's a specific fabric which is this okay. that is very common in Sierra Leone in different colors okay. and people like a lot and they resonate with because it has bright and vibrant colors and so what I did was I chose different colors of those and I was able to put it on the shoes and it came out nicely so yes I do come and choose fabrics for myself if I'm not able to get what I want at all here then I do have another um, route okay. where it's from um, Holland uh. because that's where they have the factory where it's done okay so um, now um your fashion is it only for female or you also do for both? it's actually both? unisex okay. the sneakers are unisex um, men do wear it uh, we're thinking of having children not yet but my next goal is to make sure that the men don't only have sneakers but they also have the moccasins the canvases and the dress shoes something like what you have on but then with a little twist look i think um you do remarkably well and I thank uh, you. Um, i think um, such um, an idea and a movement needs to be celebrated but again one may want to know um are you um do you have people that you employ over there or you're doing it all by yourself what's the so how does it look i like? do have i do have three employees um that are full-time staff um, market is kind of growing so of course there's going to my goal is to actually come home and manufacture from home where okay. we create jobs for the youth yeah. and and take it out because that's the whole whole goal I cannot be a Sierra Leonean want to raise the flag of my country and then stay abroad and do my product I want to be able to come home do my product from home manufacture from home full production and then we export it out to the world so um, now let, let's move to something very critical here, yeah? and it's the aspect of competition. Um, an African fabric design shoes made by an African in a very competitive market like in the US. How were you able to survive such a competition where you have very top and very experienced players there? I would tell you it's crazy it's really crazy i was like what am i gonna do because i did do my homework when you think of the nikes the reeboks and all of these guys yeah, these yeah. guys are really big okay and the moment they set an eye on my product they will want to buy me out so the first thing i did was to have a trademark on all of my products okay trademarked and licensed everything make sure that it's only mine and mine alone because if they come and see you, the little guy, they're gonna want to surpass you and do, do what you're doing in their own way. And then there will be no market for me. 
So the first thing I did was to tackle the market, know who my competition was or are, and then rectify the problem of making sure that they won't come after me. Okay, so um, let's let's die let's deviate a bit from that. And um, um, do we have access to your shoes from outside America? Yes, of course. Um, I just came home um, this December, and I successfully did launch um, my brand. It was a success. We we had so much fun, um, and I'm hoping to open a storefront. For now, we do have one or two agents that are able to locate customers should they want to purchase shoes. So yes, we have the shoes on ground, but we're still working on getting a shop to 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 showcase it there. Okay, I think um, it's been a wonderful conversation with um, Dr. Khadija Tugre Sahini, a Sri Lankan based entrepreneur in the United States of America. She's here in Freetown with us, and um, we're having a very fruitful discussion. And um, hold on for us, we'll be right back. Thank you so much. Hello, welcome again um, to the program Meet Professionals. Uh, this is a platform where I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with entrepreneurs, academics, um, trained professionals to discuss issues relating to business and that of the corporate world. Um, with me in the studios, I've been joined by Dr. Khadija Tugris Ahini. We've been discussing about her entrepreneurial journey in the United States of America. So, Doc, um, let us um, go through the aspect of consistency in entrepreneurship because a lot of entrepreneurs in Africa, or precisely in Sierra Leone, when once they start their journeys, they give up so easily. So, what has been keeping you moving? Um, for me, uh, I think is one when you are consistent, whether it's going the way how you want it or not, you have to be consistent if this is something that you really want to do. Now, when when people get stuck and stop um, in the middle of you know being an entrepreneur or starting some sort of a business, that's because that's not the business that is cut out for them. Because what I've noticed these days is um, people will mimic somebody else's vision and run with it. Just because they see that person is thriving in that business, they want it as well. And not knowing that everybody has their own journey. Yeah, yeah Everybody sure. has right. something that suits or work for them. And that's what we as Africans or Sierra Leonean don't understand. That, And even when I'm doing my coaching, I tell people, try to find yourself, meet yourself, accept yourself, give yourself permission to grow. Once you're able to accomplish these things, then you, you'll be able to pinpoint that this is what works for me because everybody has a different temperament. Right, right. This is what works for me. This is what works for me. No, this don't go down so well with me. And so I think the first thing is consistency and one knowing whom they are as a person before they can even get into entrepreneurship. So, so in other words, the, the, the fuel towards consistency is the passion that you have? Yes, the passion, the vision, and the mission. Okay. If you don't have those three knocked down, it's, it's a lost cause. Okay, I think, I think that, that pretty much makes sense because uh, I think the passion is the fuel that you have to go through your entrepreneurial journey. Yes. And there may be times where you have difficulties and it is the passion that keeps you going. Yep. Okay, so now what are the plans for Digest Touch Designs in as much as um, you want to go bigger and that's what we all aim at seeing um, Digest Touch in the future, but what are your specific plans in 2021 because um, I'm sure COVID-19 affected your business, right? A big time. So can you take us through briefly um, how COVID-19 affected your business and what are the plans for 2021? Thank you for that question. Um, covid COVID was a stroke, a blow in everybody's face, uh, I would say, me especially, because this is all I do. Um, don't have any extra job elsewhere. Um, 
I got to a point where I had to, in the midst of the problem, I had to find a solution. So right. what I did in 2020, this 2020, was I forgot about making shoes and started making masks wow. and head wraps okay. for um, medical first responders, um, people in the community, local stores, and I started distributing to them for free. That was my own way of giving back to my community that I right, stayed in. Because right. when I came at first, they embraced me. And so that I felt like that was the only way I could give back. Before you knew it, people were like, are you selling these? You need to sell these. And so I had for a whole month, I had a drive through at my house where I'll make hundreds of masks by myself, sitting there making hundreds, two, three hundreds a day. And right. people come and just purchase masks. And I was able to survive through that just by making masks and head wraps for people. So 2021, I am already declaring, is going to be a blissful, blissful year for, for Deja's Touch, for me personally. I think these, my goal is for Deja's Touch to go global. And um, my utmost goal is to actually come home and have a storefront, have a little factory where we start from to take it um, further. Okay, I think um, that's uh, that's very much important because um, um, we've had in several business discussions that uh, in the midst of problems and difficulties, that's where entrepreneurs see opportunities. Yeah. Um, it's obvious that um, in this part of the world that um, it's a bit different. Um, you have entrepreneurs that. that when once they see difficulties, they, they, they give up. So in your situation, you were able to see an opportunity in a problem. Mm. But in this part of the world, we have entrepreneurs that call the people that call themselves entrepreneurs. The moment they see some challenges, they are faced with problems, they tend to give up. So what advice do you have for these entrepreneurs that give up when there is a, there is a problem? That's a very interesting and important um, question. So there are two types of people in the world. Okay. In anything, uh, there are two things. It's either the positive or the negative. Right. There are people that are born entrepreneurs. There are people that are, I want to be entrepreneur just because I have seen somebody else. So now everybody's calling themselves entrepreneurs. Um, you, there's a great difference when you see somebody that is an entrepreneur that is born. Okay. That it just comes natural, where they're able to thrive easily. Wherein you have somebody as well that is an entrepreneur that is trying to be like the one that was born. So my advice to people is, um, first of all, meeting you. Because when you're able to meet you, then you're able to tap in the well and knowledge of knowing what type of an entrepreneur are you. Right. Because Sierra Leone as a whole, everybody is selling something to survive. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. doing something to survive. Yeah. And so trying to be a little bit comfortable here because this is a very important question. Yeah. We, we are failing to teach one another or to learn from one another. And so everybody just wants to drive and go, I am, I am, yeah, without yeah. even listening or learning. Yeah. Um, I always tell people, for me, it took me a while. I looked at people, I learned from people that I want to be like, um, people that I, that I am inspired by, people that, um, that are on the level that I want to be. Right. And so I learned from these guys and I implemented their method, their steps into my own method have it work for me. When you find your method, when you find your steps that works for you, yeah. it becomes very, very easy and important because it's not easy as an individual. You wake up every day as one confused person in Africa. You're not sure what's going on. You're not sure what you're doing. But then when you find your own steps, when you find your own method, it makes it easier for you to wake up in the morning. One thing that affects us in Africa is we don't have, there's no discipline, self-discipline, right. no accountability of anything. Yeah. We're not accountable of ourselves, our actions, situations, nothing.
And so that's the one thing that beats you down as an entrepreneur, because you have to be disciplined. You have to take responsibility, be accountable for things that happen. When I came very short time, what I have noticed is everybody's complaining. Government's not give me, they're not give me, this not give me, that's not give me. It's too much complaints. Yeah. You cannot be an entrepreneur and complaining and depending on people to make it happen for you. It's never right. gonna work. Right. Yeah. Even if you're selling oranges in the morning, you know you have to wake up first thing in the morning, whether you're a man or a woman, take good shower. Speak positive things to your life and to that business. Yeah. Sit right. down Peel that orange nicely. Make sure your tray is nice and clean. Your area, your spot is nice and clean. For me, first off, if my eye doesn't buy anything that you're selling, I'm not buying. Right. I'm very big on presentation. Okay. Even, um, even when I'm making my shoes, if I don't present it well, it's not, it's not good for sale. Okay. Now, Doc, um, you made mention about um, um, young entrepreneurs um, learning from others and uh, I think the entrepreneurial journey is something that uh, goes through learning on a daily basis if not uh, um, quicker than that but um, um, let us say we have young entrepreneurs here in Sierra Leone who want to learn from you who want to uh, be under your auspices in terms of mentorship so are you available in terms of providing master classes for them or maybe provide entrepreneurial tips for them because in as much as you made mention about how important it is to have a mentor in business it is also equally important for young Sierra Leoneans to also learn from you guys so what are your plans so really my plans are and and uh, that's why when I came this this year I was able to merge with um, a program a young man an ambassador called Augustine Martin Mart Martinez okay. with um, anti-glossophobia we did do a conference together um, where of course you were one of the speakers these are ways that we can actually promote inspire and impact the lives of the young ones right because they are hungry and thirst for knowledge but then they don't have the right information yeah and so that's the one thing that's hurting them um, secondly I got to understand that you also have, well meet professionals is one but then you have something else that coming up where you'll be doing executive summits and and things of that nature so yeah. I'm open and available um, however way I can help however way we can I believe in each one teach one each one love right, one each right. one support one yeah. once we're able to do that gradually we'll get there not so much to depend on the government you know, we have so much to discuss in so much less time. But, uh, less talk. Um, um, so, um, viewers um, were being affected greatly by time. But um, we're looking forward to having Dr. Khadija to Grace Ahini some other time to continue this conversation because I know you are all aiming at um, learning more. You're all wishing to learn more from what she has to offer. She's a Sierra Leonean who is open to offer mentorship, master classes to young entrepreneurs who would want to learn how she has been able to sail through in the United States as an entrepreneur and um, we we'll also create the platform to connect with her and um, this is where we we'll draw the curtain for today's session uh, meet professional this is a platform where I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with professionals academics entrepreneurs like her to discuss what has been the journey they've been into the challenges as well as how they've been able to make it through or thrive in the business or the corporate world until um, we meet again for the next edition i'm here ibkb as your host with meet professionals please don't forget to subscribe for you to have regular updates for the program. I want to say thank you so much for Dr. Khadija to grace in for gracing this program and being part of the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. Um, we'll see you next week.